I am honored to have been asked to speak by Dr. Coimbra and the organizers of the Fifth World Trauma Congress. I do have a relevant conflict of interest. I am co-founder and chief medical officer of Frontline Medical Technologies, and I will be speaking about the Cobra OS, which is a new Reboa device recently approved in Canada. I will be speaking about the complications and challenges of Reboa and the mitigating technologies, as well as training options. In alphabetical order, I will be speaking about the following Reboa technologies, which have, regula which have regulatory approval in at least one jurisdiction in the world. A good recent review is by Vranken et al, and it is referenced. The complications can be broken down by procedure step, which are well discussed in two review papers I have referenced. I will take each complication step separately and discuss the technologies meant to mitigate the harm. The first step is access, typically of the common femoral artery, and complications on this step usually rear their ugly head in the last step of achieving hemostasis. Complications include bleeding, inability to access the vessel or venous access, and improper placement. Obtaining common femoral access is the, is the Achilles heel of successful Roboa, as discussed in the AAST 2016 plenary paper by Dr. Romagnoli, which is why early access when a patient is often more stable is recommended if considering Roboa. It has been suggested that, that the transition from 12 French Roboa devices to seven French devices has resulted in fewer complications. However, the data is limited. It has also led to more percutaneous procedures as opposed to cut down in recent years. When looking at a larger series of femoral bleeding complications in percutaneous coronary intervention from Mayo Clinic, a multiple regression analysis showed sheath size above six French to be a strong independent predictor of major femoral bleeding. When looking at the manufacturers attempting to minimize access complications by reducing device profile, Originally, 12 French or greater devices were used, but seven French devices have largely replaced them in, in the past few years. Recently, four French devices are becoming available, which are not much bigger than a standard femoral arterial line. Moving on to balloon positioning complications, it is important to note that even though blind insertion and advancement is happening more frequently, imaging confirmation is still recommended. The device may either be placed in the wrong location or be unable to pass due to vessel trauma or pre-existing disease. X-ray may, may be able to help prevent major complications if done prior to inflation and malpositioned devices are recognized. Some technologies require guide wires, often stiff, and over the wire tracking of devices. These can be cumbersome and technically demanding. Other technologies are guide wire free or guide wire optional and have atraumatic tips, which may be technically easier, easier for users that are less experienced with endovascular equipment. The J or P-shaped tips are meant to prevent inadvertent branch vessel cannulation. If blind insertion is performed, external landmarks can help guide positioning to zone one or zone three. Some devices have external markers that indicate depth to help with this positioning. However, there is reasonable data to suggest zone one is at a fixed distance of 48 centimeters in most adult trauma patients and 28 centimeters for zone three. With visual markers for zone one and three highlighted on the shaft of the device, it may simplify procedures further. When inflating the device, it is important to use loss of pulse or blood pressure below the balloon or a raise in blood pressure above the balloon to help guide when aortic occlusion has occurred. Aortic or balloon rupture, unintended ischemia, especially if deployed in zone two, and potentiating proximal injuries can occur during inflation. The technology mitigating balloon inflation complications have often focused on the compliance of the balloon material. Non-compliant and semi-compliant balloons often use an angioplasty procedures, inflate to a set diameter, but do not overinflate easily. The Reboa balloons from Reboa Medical are one example of this and inflate to either 15 millimeters or 20 millimeters, but no further. Compliant balloons, on the other hand, change diameter according to how much volume of inflation medium is used and can be, and can be more easily used to occlude a wider range, range of vessel diameters. Most Reboa devices utilize compliant balloon materials to achieve aortic occlusion. An, in, an interesting innovation implement, implemented in the new semi-compliant balloon P-Reboa Pro device 
is a safety valve release that can help reduce the rupture risk when not using a fully compliant balloon. Other technologies have focused on changing the shape of the balloon to allow for safer overinflation and help prevent rupture of the balloon or artery. For example, the Cobra OS has a built-in reservoir for excess inflation medium to escape once aortic occlusion has occurred and inflation continues. Once the aorta has been occluded, there is limited time before irreversible ischemia occurs below the balloon. Reboa is not a treatment in and of itself and is only, to, and only a bridge to, to definitive surgical treatment. The complications that can occur besides ischemia are access vessel occlusion due to static flow, superphysiological pressures above the balloon, which can be especially dangerous in patients with traumatic brain injury, and migration or prolapse of the device. According to the most recent American guidelines for Roboa use, Roboa should not be done if definitive bleeding control procedure cannot be done within 15 minutes and should be limited to less than 30 minutes in zone one and less than 60 minutes in zone three. In other words, full occlusion should be minimized as tolerated by the patient, but deflation complications can occur as well. Hypotension, ischemia, reperfusion, metabolic derangements, and ongoing bleeding can, can occur. Instead of Reboa devices being an on-off switch, there has been a lot of research looking at making Reboa devices more of a dimmer switch, able to titrate partial blood flow past the balloon, so-called partial Reboa or P-Reboa. Theoretically, this could reduce the ischemic burden, but conversely may allow more bleeding below the balloon. There have been recent efforts with devices that more accu accurately titrate blood flow distal to the balloon. The P-Reboa Pro has grooves in its semi-compliant balloon surface that allow partial flow past the balloon in a more predictable manner than its previous ER-Reboa catheter counterpart. To automate P-Reboa technology in order to optimize patient hemodynamics, EVAC, or endovascular aortic control, is being developed for future use, not only in uncontrolled bleeding, but also in cardiac arrest and stroke. And finally, once bleeding has been controlled and we are ready to remove the access sheath to achieve hemostasis, we must, we must remember the triad of death, which can complicate removal of access sheaths. Hematoma, embolism, thrombosis can lead to limb loss and amputation. Apart from trying to keep the access as small as possible, arterial closure devices can be used to help with hemostasis and avoid prolonged manual compression on the groin. At last count, on the Endovascular Today website, there are 17 products available in the United States, each with their own advantages and advantages and disadvantages. The Endovascular Today website is a good place to compare endovascular devices for those interested. Now I will finish off by talking briefly about training options for available for Reboa. There was a good systematic review of the literature supporting training and assessment by Enberg, published earlier in 2020. They concluded that most simulation-based Reboa courses improve skills, but they could not comment on effect size, skill transfer and retention, and optimal course design. There are a variety of courses available around the world, with the American College of Surgeons best course being the most popular in North America and the EVTM course the most popular in Europe. I would consider Top Stent, a manual of Reboa and EVTM techniques put out by Tal Horror and the AV EVTM Society, essential reading for anyone interested in Reboa. It is free on their website and has been translated into multiple languages. Courses usually provide didactic, didactic sessions combined with a variety of hands-on training. Live animal models and perfused cadavers are expensive but are the best for honing femoral artery access skills. There are also training software modules and high fidelity models that can help with procedural steps. Despite interest, there are still major gaps. And even those trained, in the absence of Reboa cases, there is a dissipation curve. And training is only one part of a system-wide approach that is required to implement a successful Reboa program. In conclusion, complications, technology, and training all affect the risk-benefit ratio of Reboa. In the past, with inadequate training and technology, the complications were grave and the risks outweighed the benefits of Reboa. However, as the technology improves and training becomes more widespread, 
the complications will undoubtedly lessen, leading to better patient outcomes.